Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good. What's, what's up, on, man? man? How can we help I, you out? So I got a couple questions here. Um, one I want to ask for you, Zach. When so do you still use batch dialer or is it the same for other dialers? Yeah, I still use it. Okay. I like so, Mojo a lot too. I, right. I I've told everyone I like batch dial. It's my favorite one, but you got to try all of them. I, I don't think one has a crazy big advantage over others. Yeah. I'm sure it doesn't. Um, I just want to ask for the campaigns. Do you usually with one campaign, do you usually go through all the regular dials and then go to the redials or you try to take each campaign's dials first and then hit the redials after? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, I like to go through it once and then I'll just reattack it. Like, okay. uh, what? So I kind of have a rolling system uh, with type of lists and markets because I have multiple markets in my own market. And so for example, I'll do an Indian, I'll call all of Indian River County month one month mm -hmm. two i'll do st lucie county and then palm beach month three Got and then it. i'll recall them again they're big list so like th this isn't like a thousand okay big va okay. list so i switch it up by county so you get a if you're a high equity and you live in vero beach florida you're gonna get a call probably four times a year no three times a year th three times a year but you're gonna get you're gonna get a call month one you get a text from my company in month two you're gonna get a uh, reverse drive for dollars usually and a direct mail piece so that's how we do it, but it's bigger volume. Right, because I'm I'm trying to I'm, I'm I have a system right now, but I'm trying to make it better because I have I'll have one list that's like 100 leads, I'll have one that's like 1,600. Would it be better just to combine them all into one campaign, hit all those dials first, and then just go through the redials? Because I do get I do get uh, with all the numbers Batch gives you, I do get sellers on the redials. Like it's it's effective, and I don't want to just oh, skip is. over them. So try it. Okay, got it. I also wanted to ask uh, your guys' honest opinion about virtual driving for dollars. Because going full time, I have my market, but I have time for another virtual market, and I'm trying to, you know, set it up there. And I'm just wondering if that's effective. I know I'm trying to connect with people there to do some driving dollars for me, but I wanted to know if doing more with virtual driving for dollars would be better too. I, mean, I can tell you the truth. Yeah, it's kind of like what you just asked me about the redials. Mm -hmm. Do you know how I got really good at wholesaling and knowing what markets work well and what markets don't work well? I did. I I couldn't ask anyone. I just had to do it. Right. And so the thing was, I was kind of in no man's land when I started text blasting and cold calling. Right. Because you like you didn't know what cold call list worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know how I figured out pre foreclosure sucked for cold calling, but it was great for texting. No one answered the phone because everyone was they were getting spammed so much. But I texted them, they always answered the text, and so. For the redials, you just gotta try it out and see if it works or not. Think same thing. Virtual drawing for dollars. I'm talking to somebody in Tennessee. Two deals last week from virtual drawing for dollars off DMZAC.com. Two deals. Worth it for him, right? Yeah. But I got other people telling me it sucks. So the thing is, I talked about nationwide list today. The problem with virtual drawing for dollars, it's so market to market specific that you gotta do some testing, man. Be a be a scientist. Figure sure. out if it works or not. So yeah. I would say do it. See what happens. All right. Yeah, because I'm I'm trying to go 50-50 here, and I've got a good schedule to do all that. So, um, and the, the last thing I wanted to ask, um, I'm dealing with the property here, and it's it's really good. It's looking like it's low on repair costs, but I don't have a lot of good comps from the last. I want to do it from the last three months at least, and I just kind of wanted to ask in where I can find on the um, your guys' website, or if you can just tell me the equation for evaluating a house from cap rate because i found what most buyers like for the cap rate here i just want to have put it into play it's about seven seven to eight um that talked to a couple that's but low. that's lower in my opinion we're talking about single family homes right yeah so so you're looking at evaluating a property on a cap rate where you really just can't get good good comps correct yeah yeah so is it just is the house ugly or is it just not fit the norm or is it just like the sticks what what's the challenge with not it, it's a it's a nice house it's like a four three and they did some renovations but they absolutely do not want to go through real air and want to cash off right yeah. so, so the, the problem is single family houses it's it's hard to evaluate them on a cap rate because cap okay. rates really designed as a net number for um commercial deals like so yeah I honestly, I don't really look at cap rates unless you're really supposed to look at cap rates at like four units plus. And, and okay. in my opinion, it's six because six, six is considered a commercial property. You can do it for single family though. You can, but what you need to do is change the word. Cap rate does not work in the single family. You want to start saying ROI, return okay. on investment. Yeah. It's because these are regular people. So they go, okay, if I put in a hundred thousand dollars and I get X amount of dollars net, then what's my return? 
And so just get rid of the word cap rate because people freak out. It's the exact same thing, by the way. But yeah. when, so people play with you on commercial properties, they go, you know, you know what the cap rate is? And if you go, well, what's a cap rate? They're instantly going to wipe you off your list because if you don't know a cap rate, you're a long way away from buying the property. So as far as the number, it's what the market will dictate. If you have a nice, clean property and it's good to go. So most single family houses, people want close to nine to 10 percent. I'm talking on average, every market specific. If you have a hot market, it can push down to the numbers like six would be the bottom line number right. because you got to understand you can put your money almost in a T-bill around four and a half, five percent. I just got an advertisement from Edward Jones. I don't work for him, not affiliated. They offered me a six month CD for 5.15%. So just understanding, I have no risk. I never got to deal with town. I got to do crap. So why would someone step on a property at six or 7% of a long-term commitment of an asset that's very expensive to sell? Because here's the problem with the cap rate analysis is, so if I have a CD or say I buy a stock, not a stock, or say you buy a bond or something like that, which is a crazy thing right now. When I sell it, there's very, I click a button, it's over and it's like a nominal fee. When you sell a piece of real estate, there's, it can be up to 12%. So it's very misleading. So I just, I go, Hey, it rents for this. Here's the cost and you can evaluate the numbers. Most cap rates ROI on any type of real estate can all be manipulated. The biggest factor is any type of deferred maintenance. Mm. So I have people present, oh, I got a, I got a 15 cap rate. I'm like, yeah, but it's $300,000 to do the roof. It's a hundred thousand dollars to pave the driveway. They all deferred it and they artificially push it up. So just do, if someone's willing to invest their money, you got to look at what their alternative is. If they can get a CD at 5% and they don't have to look or talk to anybody and they click a button, 7% in my opinion is a hard sale for that. Now, if they like real estate, you got to understand the one advantage that you get over it is most investors, they want the depreciation part on it. So do you know what the uh, depreciation rate is on a single family house versus a commercial? How many years you can depreciate it? I do not know. This is valuable. On a single family home, it's 27 and a half years. Don't ask me how they come up with that number. That's the IRS. Okay. So if you bought a house for 200,000 divided by 27 and a half, that's basically, they can calculate the depreciation. Now you can push that number up to like double digits. But guys like me, I'll buy houses like that all day long because I get the depreciation factor and they think it's a safe investment. Do commercial, it's 39 years, much, much bigger numbers though. So find out what your buyers, are they truly chasing ROI or they want ROI and depreciation and cater to the number to them and go, listen, based on the depreciation, if you buy it for 200 grand, here's how much more you get. And what happens when a guy like me buys 20 or 30 properties, we can offset income like by three, $400,000 if you collect the depreciation, there's a cost to it. But listen, if you got a good asset and just you're, you're struggling with the comp, just I would go out further with the comp six months, nine months. And the comps to me are kind of more important, but I know we're in a little bit different of a market. Just do a cash flow. We could debate over cap rate all day. Honestly, dude. I love that stuff. All you have to do is your cap rate's gonna be different than what the cash buyer's cap rate's gonna be. I promise you this, because they're gonna assume appreciation in their thing and tax advantage or whatever stupid thing they do. So what I can tell you is just get it for the lowest price you can and then yeah. bring it to a buyer and say, hey, I, I this should be under that cap rate. Just figure out what it'll run out for and then just do the simple, just do a simple cap rate. I know you don't like cap rate, but just call do it, a simple- call it, call it an ROI, because that's what yeah. most people, they, they're not like way advanced on it. And then if you want to get more advanced, go listen, if you buy at this rate, this is how much depreciation extra you're going to get a year. Yeah. And just do that and then bring it to them and see what, see what they do. They're going to do a different one. It's like figuring out repair costs for you and a cash buy. There's going to be different. But so, remember when they sell right. it, they're going to base it off comps because that's the only way you can sell yeah. those. So there's cash flow of a property and then there's comps. Unfortunately, single family will always be based on comps. It's just a rule written in and it's hard to change yeah. even yeah. if we wanted to. So yeah i mean it was just another strategy i was looking at honestly i just found a couple comps quick on batch and i already know what number going yeah. for no but i just want to know it so um yeah other than that guys that's all um and i like your shirt rick so uh, all right, yeah. that's all i got that's all i got all I right appreciate it. Appreciate that's how it. we should run uh wholesaling just oh yeah go yellowstone stuff take care of business man <laughs> all right